Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for joining to episode number seven. It's unbelievable. Episode number seven of <laughs> Going Meta. <laughs> Hi, Jesus. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you, Alex? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm uh, I'm enjoying summer. <laughs> so uh, it's That's it's cool. uh, it's a uh, bouncy ride. It's uh, between uh, almost 40 degrees and under 20 degrees uh, within a couple of days. So <laughs> I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's very weird. That's but weird. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're How having a similar experience yeah. here, right? So yeah, alternate. You know, a couple of days of rain, a bit of lower temperatures but we're back i mean the heat is back so it's uh anyway it's what it is yeah. but yeah it, it is indeed yeah how, how was uh before we dive in i need to ask you this because you you just came back from graph summit apec edition oh true. Uh, with a couple I of colleagues uh going across uh, four cities in uh, in asia uh, i think from uh, from sydney uh, over over Melbourne, Singapore to Bangalore, so uh, across across the, the, the huge continent there. So how, how was that? Uh, yeah. How was your how was your jet lag? <laughs> and how, how well, about, you know? <laughs> jet lag over. Uh, fortunately, I mean it was uh, I was back last uh, probably eight nine days ago now, so it's all good. But it was fantastic. I mean it was it was really brilliant. I mean I, I kind of. Uh, I, I changed the, the EMEA uh, dates. I did a couple of them and then joined the, the, the teams in, in, uh, in APAC for, for, the, for the summits over there. But they've been fantastic. I mean, reception has been uh, great. I mean, attendance, you know, the, the, it's amazing to be in touch with the, you know, the local communities. And, and also, from my point of view, meeting the teams uh, that hadn't had a chance, because many of them have, been, have joined during, during the pandemic when we were not allowed to travel. But uh, yeah. but yeah, no, overall it's been a fantastic experience. I'm I'm really happy. And one of the one of the funny things, and and I, I shared that with you when I was there, is <laughs> that you know the uh, you know the 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 great feedback that I got about these series. So there's uh, there's you know followers all, all over the world, and there were some in APAC, and they were giving me some ideas and and thanking for for the for the you know for the series, so they're finding it useful and interesting. So that was that was really really excellent. Right. So that, that yeah. was one of the highlights, I have to say. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's always great uh, if if you uh, uh, if you meet somebody that watches uh, uh, this. And I, I had the same experience. I I went to uh, obviously also to a couple of, of not not Asia, but here in Europe, a couple of, of of graph summits, and people were approaching me and say, "Hey, I watch Going Meta, or I watch this other New Voyager Life," and uh, it's like, "Oh wow, yeah, <laughs> this is really it's really fun, uh, and it's really good to to see." And obviously, uh, obviously, I mean. If if you if you like what you see, uh, you know, post a comment, type in chat uh, if you're watching live. Um, what do you think about it? If you have any feedback, any uh, uh, you know, yeah, any pointers uh, for any, us, any ideas as well? Because maybe there are some some topics that we're not covering, and and that's one of the reasons. I mean, I'll get into that when we start with today's topic. But yeah, we want to really open to to maybe things that we hadn't thought of but maybe you are and 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 if you drop us a line through any of the channels and i suppose you know, community any social media or any way we can take that and and maybe explore it in one of the future sessions absolutely yeah or or if something uh, that's that's what we we uh, we we discovered right was uh, that uh, somebody we we hinted at uh, at something during uh, during one of our episodes i think it was episode number 3 or 4 where where we talked about um Anthologies from from GraphQL, and then uh, oh, yeah. uh, we uh, I had uh, Rui Levy from from Accenture Labs in in Tel Aviv uh, took that as an inspiration and says, okay, this is something we just stretched and scratched the surface at. and he said, okay, actually I can I think I can do that, and he 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 built that so. I mean, if, if you oh, if you do that, also let us know. <laughs> yeah, no, that was great, and they mentioned that, so that was that was brilliant. Yes. I, I think yeah. I was in in Singapore at the time, or I can't remember yeah. where. And at the same time, you know, you were in Tel Aviv, and and and, yeah. and people were kind of mentioning this this series. So yeah, really really cool. That that's really rewarding and and quite nice. Yeah, yeah. it's not just the two of us, Alex. I mean, some people are, are exactly are... yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's good. It's good to it's good to see. Um, all right. Uh, before we dive in, in, in into today's topic, I want to take one one quick detour. Uh, I wanted to mention this uh, uh, notes twenty twenty two is coming up, 
So um, this is our online uh, developer conference. So we are hosting the, this since a couple of years now. And uh, this edition, this year's edition will take place in November, 16th and 17th of November. And uh, we are looking for speakers. So if you are interested in uh, presenting something, uh, anything really goes. The the audience is is uh, the usual Neo for J friendly audience, so you don't have to be shy. You can present on all all um, all kinds of topics. Uh, if it's a high level or a deep technical dive, uh, please submit your 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 idea, your concept. Uh, link is in chat now, uh, and uh, yeah, just go there. Uh, it's open for another eighteen days or so, so you have got you've got time. And uh, I think yes, you you uh, surely attended. You also presented uh, at, at notes before. Uh, I think it's a great, uh, a great oh, event. It's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, we interestingly we I, I've, I've talked a couple of times about new semantics, and not surprisingly, the topic of ontologies and all that. But I think it's it's <laughs> a, it's a great event, and there's loads of great presentations. So it's and it's also a great opportunity to share what you what you're doing. So really, really cool. So yeah, I would invite and encourage everyone to. To give it a try yeah cool uh that's that's what i wanted to say but now uh let's uh let's go back uh to uh going meta so today episode seven like i said in the beginning uh is uh the topic is generating natural language from your knowledge graph by annotating ontology so that's a it's a long title uh <laughs> we, we we try to to shorten it but it just didn't want to be any shorter so uh um we we can uh, we can uh, yeah we can unpack that a little bit I, th I think as we go sure. and uh, yeah and, and uh, go go right in yeah I was going to say that and and probably we can as usual I'll open with a couple of uh, of slides but let me mm -hmm. bring this window to my other um, desktop so I can bring the slides in. And probably start sharing. Am I am I sharing? Probably not yet. Not but, yet. Um, yeah. So that should be uh, hopefully there. Alex, let me know if it's uh, readable and it will want to go probably on on full screen mode. Here it is. But, yeah. Perfect. I'll go on slideshow. So that yeah, long title. But you know, the, I, I I wanted to have a, a an intro um, to this. I mean, I think that there's a there's a great connection between knowledge graphs and, and uh, natural language understanding, natural language generation, uh, integration with chatbots. We've had some projects uh, in the community uh, around this topic. So before we, and, and we will definitely dive in deeper into that, but before we go into things like conversational uh, uh, APIs, interfaces, and so on and so forth, I wanted to take uh, one session to uh, to go on something a lot, you know, probably more, more basic, but very interesting because We've talked many times about this idea of, of knowledge graphs and graphs being self-descriptive and and, and, and and contain a lot of intuitive information. So I was thinking, you know, one of the things that we can do is try to, to get our graph to talk, right? To, you know, when you see uh, Keanu Reeves acting in the, in the matrix, that's something that every human understands. You see there's an actor connected to a movie to act it in or think of any note in, in a relationship. That sounds like something that I would, be able, I should be able to very very easily translate into 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 a uh, natural language, and that's that's the idea. And and we, I wanted to explore uh, the possibility of using ontologies for that. And and we've talked you know, a number of times about ontologies, but uh, let me use this simple diagram because that connects uh, that that describes the idea of what we're going to do today. But it connects with uh, probably a session or chapter number four, I believe, or five. I can't remember. You probably will correct me, Alex, but it's the one where we explore the, the um, uh, reasoning, ontology-based reasoning, right? Where we, uh, you probably remember how we described that uh, someone who acts in a movie is an actor, and and then uh, uh, Neo 4 j would take that definition and derive that because Alex or Jesus acted in in, in going meta, he derived that we were actors. In, I mean, some, something along these lines. But the idea is, I describe express some knowledge some some semantics some meaning uh, uh declaratively in an ontology and then there's some logic and this is this component in the center that looks at my data in neo 4 j and makes this ontology actionable and produces something in that case it was deriving new knowledge new information today what we're going to do is take the annotations in the ontology and generate some natural language does that make sense 
Just that makes sense. It was episode four, by the way. Brilliant. So, so the concept is exactly the same. So we, yeah, brilliant. So, so we've talked many times about ontologies being useful. Uh, uh, how, how do you call it? Actionable elements. So we, we really wanted mm -hmm. to focus on the practical side of ontologies, and we talk how how sometimes we we just model ontologies would know exactly why we're doing that and it's great because sometimes you just describe a particular domain but when you can uh use that for some kind of automated processing when you can act on your data and derive something out of your ontology then it's when they become really really powerful and that's you know like i say exactly the same con concept except that today our ontology in addition to the usual elements that that, that define your domain your data set we're going to add some uh, um, natural language generation specific uh, uh, patterns, right? So I'm going to say, how do I want uh, relationships or elements in my graph to be uh, described in natural language? And I will have a general uh, purpose engine that will take that, look at my data and generate some uh, some text in natural language. So that, that's the idea. So what does that what does that look like? So these annotations that we've talked about, I mean, and uh, Actually, before I go into the process, well, yeah, why not? That's that's exactly what I've described. So we're going to have to uh, actually create the ontology. If we haven't done so yet, like I said before, we will annotate it with these patterns that generate uh, the natural language, and we'll bring back the ontology into Neo4j. We'll load it, or at least make it accessible. It, this this is probably a general approach, but uh, probably it will make sense when we when we see it hands on, and then we'll run the natural language generator, which is the the the, the the fragment of cipher that I was I was talking about, but uh, these uh, annotations, as I was saying before, will look like just extensions to RDF. So we've seen how in an ontology I will define things like a class. I mean, I just, I just say I will say in in my uh, movie database there's a, a a category or a type of things that's called a movie and that's called a class and that has a label. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, uh, I'll define a namespace because as you know, in RDF, anything, everything has to be uniquely identified. So I'll create my own namespace and I'm, I'm going to use this one, but this is entirely generic. So you can create your own. And I'm going to uh, annotate, for example, classes with, uh, this is the property that I want you to use when you refer to this individual. Or when I define relationships and remember that relationships will are called in, in OWL uh, uh, vocabulary object properties. And I will say what's the starting and, and ending uh, category with domain and range. I will again annotate that with patterns, right? I will do things like uh, when you find an acted in relationship, spelled like acted in underscore, uh, uh, acted underscore in, maybe you want to spell it as uh, this actor acted in that movie, is in that movie, is in the cast of that movie. And I will, I will use those mm -hmm. to generate uh, to generate the text. So as you can see, I'm, I'm introducing patterns, generic patterns. I don't want to do it manually on every query. The logic is the same. I want to do it once and declaratively in my ontology. And then I want some generic code to pick that up and do it for me on the fly. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a look at what that code looks like. But most of you will not want to do this manually, as usual, because what writing RDF is it's not meant to, to do by humans. I mean, you can if you're comfortable with things like this. But we're also going to play with this uh, tool called Protege, which is an ontology editor, an open source one that you can, of course, Google like I did, and uh, and uh, and that will make our task easier. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah, sounds interesting. Cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's get on. So uh, as usual, uh, I have my my tools here. I have my sandbox, and I've uh, already started. Um, a movies database. Uh, for those of you who are new to this, you just have to go in here, select your database, your data set. Uh, in, in this case, I'm, I'm using, like I say, the, the movies for the first example. And once it's created, I can open the browser, which should come here. And uh, at the same time, and this should be, uh, well, it's already available. As usual, in, in GitHub, we have uh, um, the Go Meta repository that contains all the code and all the all the resources that we use in our in our sessions, and it's uh, already a, a session seven folder where you will find um, the bits that we need for today. But uh, so yeah, let, let's you find that in the, the video description. So oh, cool. Anybody okay. that's wondering, that's down down in the video description. Love it. Okay, perfect. So uh, right, so let's uh, let's start. So we have our movie database. It's pre-populated. And, and uh, as you know, we can uh, do something like, actually, I'm going to use the, 
for the this keyboard it's going to be easier so uh you can do uh the db uh schema visualization but it's um a pretty straightforward model so we have movies we have people and they're connected through a number of relationships so people can be actors directors and and they can act in movies review movies direct movies and so on and so forth so pretty simple model uh, when the first thing, like I said, I, I want to make my uh, ontology explicit. I want to create an ontology if I haven't done so. You might be able to go straight to Prodigy, as we're going to do, and it should be here. Yeah. But instead of starting from scratch, uh, there's there's a, a method uh, in uh, in Neo Semantics which comes pre-installed in uh, in the sandbox that will give you a skeleton of the ontology. And I'm going to try to use that. I'm not entirely sure it's going to work because it's been. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, I, I am. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's just you know, when when Sandbox gets updated, this is what I mean. So there, there's a, the the HTTP endpoint sometimes doesn't start properly, and uh, let me give it a try. So it's in RDF. Uh, we, if I do ping, that should test it. Yeah, and like I suspected, sometimes you know these, uh, uh, but it's it's not a problem. I mean, I I can I can run this locally. I'll show you what the the code looks like. The, the what we need to run is just a get request on um, uh, the RDF endpoint, the database name which is Neo4j, and and the uh, the, the the method is onto. So if I run it here, it's not going to work. But let me run it locally. It, 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 I think it's just a glitch because normally it, it all, always works. So I'll, I'll check with the teams and, and we'll make sure that, that that's uh, ready. But basically, what that does is, is generate the skeleton of an ontology, right? That we are, are now going to be able to uh, save as a, as a text file and now edit. This is uh, RDF, of course, it's OWL. So I can copy that and maybe put it in um, uh, text. I'll do it, which is the editor that I um, let me use uh, Atom. There we go. And create uh, all I'm doing here is pasting the text that has been generated, and I'm going to save it uh, maybe just in a directory. Uh, yeah, let's put it in the uh, going meta. Oops, let me dev going meta. Let's put it on C session seven and let's put it on ontos and let's call it movies test. Of course, you can give, give it the name that you want TTL extension because it's turtle format and that's fine. That's all I need. It's saved in dev and now I can go to um, my protege environment, like I was saying before and say okay project go and open the file that we've just created and it's there movies test and i can open it oops it's gone come back for there you go <laughs> and you still is. i'm still sharing the right uh yes yeah it's it's oh. back you if you want you can click the hide button at the at the bottom with the oh the sure overlay. sorry about that is that better yeah and hopefully we still have uh, our browser here. Okay, good. So this is just a way of, of getting the ontology kick started, but you can of course start from scratch. I mean, the good thing is now you have, you know, the entities that have been created. So I have movie, I have person, uh, I have uh, the object properties, which are the relationships that I described, and it doesn't export the data properties, but we can create those manually. These are the, the attributes or the, the properties of the nodes and the relationships. So. What am I going to do? So, like I said in the in the introduction, I'm going to generate this type of annotations. I'm going to say, okay, uh, because what I'm doing is generating uh, a natural language text from uh, from relationships, from nodes. The kind of question that I will want to answer is, okay, Neil, tell me what you know about this thing. And this thing can be a node. This can. I, I don't want to uh, to have to tell Neil what it is. I want mm -hmm. him to know it because it's already described in my ontology. So that's that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So, okay, so I, uh, yeah, back to, like I say, Prodigy, I, I have to say, okay, when you find a node and it's of type person, I'm going to create an annotation to tell you how you should refer to that node. And for that, like I was saying before, I'm going to create uh, um, an annotation. That's how you do it in Prodigy. And, and again, if you, uh, I'm not an expert in Prodigy, that's what I've learned. If you're an expert, maybe you have better ways of doing it. 
Uh, but um, so yeah, like I was saying before, I can specify my new namespace for my annotations. I create that one. Feel free to use your own. And um, I want to give things uh, a name. And that's what I'm going a bit meta as, as usual, right? So I'm saying whenever you find uh, a, uh, a person node, uh, you are going to refer to it. You're going to describe it in natural language using a property of my choice. In my case, it's going to be the name property. So that's why I'm going a bit meta. So this name is the property of the node of type person. The name is just the, the, the name of the annotation. So I hope it makes sense. So now we see that in order to, I could have used a different name, maybe that's not very fortunate, but anyway, we'll probably see it better in the movie. If I go to the movie and I do the same, I'm going to create another annotation. And I'm going to say the name, and the way to refer to the movie is actually its title, the mm -hmm. title property. So, okay, yeah. So this is basically telling my, my uh, uh, natural language generator engine, which is we're going to see in a minute, that's the property that you have to use to refer to a movie. So when you say this movie was released in that year, I will refer to the movie with, with its title because it's a, a natural way of, of, of describing it. Now, I will find things about the movie and I will find properties, I will find relationships that connect to other things. And when I find those, I will want to, again, generate natural language out of them. Mm -hmm. So for example, when I find something like an acted in, that's a relationship that connects a person to a movie, an actor to a movie, it, uh, this person acted in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create, and here I'm, I'm completely creating my own annotation, right? In the same way I've created name, I'm going to create two types of relationships. I'm going to create one that's called direct. Now I'll explain in a minute what, that, what I mean by that. So I'm going to say um, direct is when I use the relationship in the defined direction. Or in other words, Let's say I'm describing Keanu Reeves, right? And I will want to uh, Neo 4 j to generate some text about Keanu Reeves. So I will want it to, to, to take out well, his name, of course, maybe his date of birth, but also a list of the movies that he acted in. Mm -hmm. And that happens to be an out outgoing relationship. That's kind of the direct sense of the relationship. So when I'm describing Keanu, oh, okay. Okay, he acted in those movies. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking about The Matrix, in this case, there's relevant information navigating the relationship backwards. So I, I will want to say The Matrix was released in that year, and some actors, act, actresses acted in it. So I'll have to navigate the relationship backwards. So in order to indicate how to generate my text in the direct or the inverse relation uh, sense or direction, that's why I'm using these, these two annotations. That's, that's what I, it probably will make more sense when I, when I start querying it. But essentially, if I navigate it in the direct uh, uh, direction, so I will say something like, um, well, probably something like acted in, but in natural text, natural language text, instead of the acted underscore in. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's my, um, I don't know, that might be my, my default. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So um, there, there's a way of annotating, uh, um, of tagging, if you want, with language uh, annotation. So it's meant to be used to, to say this, this message or this text is in, in English, in French, in Italian, in German, whatever. But we're going to use it to tag and indicate the um, the style of the of this of the speech that we want to generate. Maybe we want to generate a, a short, more compact, a longer one, a more formal, a more casual. So this is uh, there's always going to be a default uh, way of of generating a natural language, which is this one. But I'm going to create some additional ones. So let me show you what that can look like. So maybe I want to express exactly the same, but something like. Um, uh, uh, is in the cast of. So that would be another way of saying uh, Keanu Reeves is in the cast of the matrix, right? So that's the kind of, of text that we will be generating. But that's a longer one. So we might want to call this long, right? So I'm uh, basically tagging it and I'm going to do uh, a third one, which is probably the, the short one, which is something like is, right? Keanu Reeves is in the matrix even a, a, a short version. So that's it. So, okay, so I have three direct annotations for three styles of speech, short, long, and the default, but I want to have the same backwards. Right? And I'm going to uh, do exactly the same, but I'm going to create the uh, inverse um, annotation. 
And the way I would describe it when I'm talking about the matrix and I want to link it to Keanu Reeves, it will be something like, uh, um, I don't know, uh, the matrix has uh, Keanu Reeves in it, has has in has in it maybe some. You in, in the it. in the direct uh, field. It, it will be the inverse. I'm describing the matrix, <coughs> but I'm following the acted in uh, in reverse order. No, yes, I understand, but I think you you need to click inverse on the left hand side. Oh, thank you, thank you, thanks for that because I've that's probably when when you created it, and I've had this error several times in <laughs> when I was working on this. So, has in it. Uh, default, okay, and as before, let's create a, a couple of other. The, the maybe the, um, the long version could be something like uh, um, the matrix includes in the cast. So basically, it's the passive voice, right? Yeah. In the cast, uh, Keanu Reeves. Let's call it long, and maybe um, uh, we do the short version, which is something like includes. I mean, you get the, the the idea. It's just that maybe it's not the, the perfect, but we have in, enough now. So that, that's the kind of annotation that we create. Yeah. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. And if I save it in, in, uh, in Protege, now we look at how magically it's uh, added all those elements in the uh, RDF like we saw before, right? So this is the serialization uh, that, that we've created. And as you know, we can copy that. Uh, and load it in, in Neo4j. So let's go to our database. And we can uh, actually, before we, we do that, because we're going to load RDF, we have to use the, the to do the usual, uh, the usual setup. I'm going to copy paste that, which is essentially defining. Uh, and for those of you who joined us in previous episodes, you know that you have to create the constraint on the, on the URI. And you have to create to give some uh, configuration uh, to the graph. Um, essentially, what, what I'm doing here uh, is pretty much that. So create a constraint, and I'm saying ignore uh, URIs. I don't care too much about those well, namespaces, not URIs. Uh, I'm keeping the language tag, and that's important because that's how I'm annotating the style of uh, of speech. And I'm um, I'm using array because I'm having multiple values, multiple tags for different uh, elements. So now we okay. have. Uh, that and I can do the usual uh, call NTNS import RDF and in this case I'm going to do inline because I've just copy pasted it and it's turtle. So uh, I'm going to recopy it again. So where is that? Where did I put my too many windows as usual? <laughs> and I'm trying now to find where they are. Maybe it's in the other screen. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah, exactly. You're right. So copy and I paste uh, the RDF. And if there's no mistakes there, there shouldn't be. I've imported successfully 40 triples. And we can, of course, very briefly look at what that, uh, what it looks like. So I can look at a class. We have two of them. Let me actually modify that a little bit. I can see that um, good. So I'm going to uh, use uh, the label maybe. So we have movies and persons, obviously, mm -hmm. and um, and you see that the annotations are here, right? So if I click on movie, we, have, we see the name is the title, and if I expand this, uh, we've defined um, uh, a number of of relationships. But in particular, we've looked at the acted in, right? And these acted in, as you can see, this is an old version of the browser, but still we can see that it has the direct and the inverse annotations, right? Yeah. So it's all there. Now, all I have to do is start writing Cypher that exactly like we did with the uh, uh, ontology-based inferencing does the navigation between the data and the metadata. And what's going to happen here is, OK, I um, let me uh, put a fragment of code rather than starting from, from scratch. But I'm going to say, um, OK, take, take one element, and we'll uh, select one at random. Let me see what that looks like. So um, let's say I'm going to pick it up by, by ID. So let's grab one. Uh, for example, if we start with a person, uh, any preference? 
Alex, should we take Tom Cruise? Should we take Emil? <laughs> take Tom Cruise, Demi Moore is fine as well. Tom Cruise, okay. Tom Cruise yeah. is uh, Node ID 16. Let's pick it up by Node ID. That's 16. And of course, this match expression is going to pick up, it's going to capture anything, right? Anything we know about, about uh, Tom Cruise. And that's exactly what we want. So we're uh, just selecting it by ID, but we're mm -hmm. going to follow any relationships because basically the question that we want to answer in natural language is tell me everything we know about uh, um, about Tom Cruise, right? So fine, that gets me the data, right? That's the bucket at the bottom, but I need the ontology. The ontology is loaded as well. And we know that the ontology, because we just explore it, is a set of classes, object properties, and so on. So I want to find the match and say, okay, for Tom Cruise, I know a few things and I can expand these and find out more, but we know that he's acted in some movies. And we know that we have defined some um, uh, NL, uh, NL generation annotations for the acted in relationship. So that's exactly what I'm doing here is go find all the, all the definitions of object properties and see if there is a match for the one that we have in use or the ones that, you know, any R that comes out of, of Tom Cruise. So that's where the match happens, right? So this mm -hmm. OP, this uh, definition in the ontology has a, has a label. And if it's uh, one of the ones that we get for Tom Cruise, then I'm going to use it. I'm interested if only if there's a direct or an inverse annotation, because if there's no annotation, I don't know how to translate that into natural language. So that's another check. Is it annotated? If it is, then I continue. Okay. And then, so, uh, because we only did this for the, for the acted in, uh, we would exactly. if, if if Tom Cruise were to di direct something, as exactly, a, he would be not a director. He would. So okay. my exactly my my query here is only looking at the uh, relationships for which I have some annotation because all it's yeah. all it's going to do is generate some natural language. So if I don't have an annotation, I don't know how to deal with that. So I will yeah. ignore those. So there will not yeah. be a match. But you know the, the story is simple, right? We would uh, continue generating annotations of for course. all the rest yes. of the relationships, yeah. and then without any change, which is the powerful thing as usual, this would still work. So yeah. I check. Uh, of That's course, good because that. if, you know you, we, if we could have hard coded it and say, okay, look only at acted in, but then like I said, if you if you change it, if you if you uh, add more uh, annotations at some point, then. Um, it's, it's just pick them up. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. that's exactly the same concept as, as what, when we did the, the, the reasoning. So I checked that the um, that the labels match, of course, that uh, these um that we have a uh, um a match also on the on the classes that are at both ends of the of the of the relationship, right? Let's say for whatever reason that we have acted in, but we only have plays for which I mean, not not movies well, then they wouldn't be a match so in this case because the ontology defines and and that's to be honest that's that's optional we might want to i'm, I'm trying to be very strict here and only uh follow the definitions in my ontology and i've defined my acted in as something that goes from an actor to a movie but if we want to ignore that i could easily remove uh the domain and range and say whenever you find an acted in use it it might work mm -hmm. but the problem is introduces more variability but that's that's just something that we could um, uh, add or remove as needed. Now, because I don't know if the relationship is incoming or out or out, outgoing, right? I, and I want to be able to be generic. I I pick anything, but then I have to decide: do I use the direct or the inverse? And that's mm -hmm. what I check. So look, what I'm actually let me run this, and it's telling me. So what I'm building, and you see how I'm going to combine these three in a sentence. I'm getting the subject, which is what's the node that I've selected, which was Tom Cruise. I have three options for predicate, which is exactly what I defined. So uh, he acted in, or he is in the cast of, or he is in, depending on my style. And I'll, I'll go on to how to select the style in a minute. But first, I have to decide whether it's a direct navigation or inverse. And I do that just by using a case expression here. So if the start node in the relationship uh, R, right, which is that one here, is n so if there's a match uh, with uh, uh, so if this goes is outgoing from n so the start mm -hmm. node of r is n then use direct because I'm navigating in that direct fashion if not use the inverse so it's picking up the right one actually we can so we can just to just to just yeah. to confirm so because we didn't we, we just went by id so that means n n could be anything so in in our case we picked an actor but we could have picked a movie instead and then it would be 
the other way around. That. Let's do that exactly. And and this code would still work. That's what I mean because I'm yeah. I'm not imposing any order. All I'm saying is, if it's direct, pick the direct. If it's inverse, pick the inverse. Let's see what would happen if we instead of taking uh, Tom Cruise, we take Top Gun. So Top Gun, uh, because we're selecting by ID, uh, Top Gun's ID is uh, 29. So the same query on 29, hopefully, will give us, look at that, the opposite, yeah. right? <laughs> inverse, it's telling us Top Gun contains, and the one that we're interested in is Tom Cruise, of course, includes in the cast so it's using the kind of the the passive voice which is the one that we did for the for the for the yeah. inverse so that's how and that's a great question because that's that's the whole point we want this to be completely generic i don't want to have to tell at every question this is this or this i don't want a hard code i want it all to be encoded in my ontology the general purpose knowledge and then my yeah. query my engine is mm -hmm. flexible enough to to understand that and use it in the right way so the, the, the next thing I have to do is pick the right style. So which which text you want me to generate? Something casual, something formal, something long, something short. So basically, which tag do I use? And maybe we can go with the default. We could do that with some code, but there's a mm -hmm. convenient method uh, in um, Neo Semantics. And let me show that to you. And I'm going to paste the code here. We can just skip this, which is uh, the method get lang value. So like I said, the, this tag is used, normally used for language uh, indication. That's why the method is called get lang value. But essentially what I do is I so pass... So lang language, it's, it's, it's like French, German, Correct. Uh, yeah. Chinese. So in, and yeah. you could think of this particular case, we could use it for, you know, to generate speech in different languages as well. So it's mm -hmm. any kind of annotation. Yeah. So I'm saying for now, pick the default. So it's exactly the same code, uh, same logic for direct and inverse. But now I'm yep. saying, let's go with the default style. And if I go with the default, now it's taking what well, the default has in it. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, all the kind of uh, descriptions, text descriptions for, for this movie. And if mm -hmm. I go back to Tom Cruise, who was Tom Cruise? I can't remember. 16. The, 16. If I go with 16, it would still do the same. And the Tom Cruise acted in uh, this or that, right? Yeah. Oh, so cool. <laughs> what do I need to do? Well, just uh, the step, the final step is easy. And I'm going to, again, copy paste it. But it's, uh, um, as you can see, all I need to do now is, well, concatenate the, th the three fragments to make a, uh, a sentence out of it, right? Tom Cruise acted in Jerry Maguire, Top Gun and Fleet, uh, Fleet with Men. And, mm -hmm. um, and after concatenating, one thing I can do in order not to generate too, ver I mean, too many lines, I can do some aggregation. Let me show what that is. It's the same same query up till here, but I add an additional step where I um, uh, I do two things. I uh, I do an aggregation, so basically I put it all in a single line when there's multiple values for the same property. So you see, Tom Cruise acted in these three moves instead of having ah, three lines. Okay. I put it all in yeah. a. It's, it's a group by right. Yeah. So that looks and, and I just do a plus because you know concatenating these three strings generates some text. So. That, that's the idea. I mean, it's pretty pretty straightforward, right? So all I have to say is how I wanted to, to generate the text. And then I apply the, let's say I want to, instead of go with the default, I'm going to go with the with the long, right? Yeah. And it will go with uh, something like is in the cast off, right? So that's that's pretty pretty simple. So it just selects the the right style of, of speech. So that that that's the idea. It's it's very simple. So uh, mm -hmm. I will not go into the detail, but it's it's all here in the, in this um, uh, in this repository. So if you go to the what I call the engine, now we have a, an extended version of it that contains exactly the code that I've just created, plus a similar one for attributes, right? So uh, it, this works for the attributes in the, for example, the date of birth. The date of birth is not a relationship coming out of Tom Cruise; is an attribute, the property of the node. Ah, so yes, of course. Content. Yeah. So I will, um, and um, and similarly, what I've done before, um, just to uh, keep this not too long, is I've created an ontology which is movies annotated that contains exactly what I've done plus some other things. I have also, you know, this is the actor in that we've just created, but we also have the roads, right? And it also has a uh, some attributes. For example. There's the uh, the property born, the date of birth, right? Uh, so we have the birth year. I've done the same for release. So the, the, the concept is pretty much the same. So you go through each of the elements, you annotate yep. them. And, and what we can do now to have a more complete example, uh, let's go to the raw format as usual. This is 
available for us. And what I can do is I can replace my ontology. Uh, and for that, all I have to do is uh, This is a trick to delete all the ontologies imported, all the elements, because they are all tagged as resources. And all I have to do now is uh, rerun the, the import. Oops, hang on. But this time, instead of using the, uh, the inline, I can point at a URL, which is the one in the repository. Except that when I use that, you probably know this by now, I use the fetch instead of the... Of the so this is going to basically go to this URL and import all the annotations that I've created uh, manually before, right? So if I do that, hopefully that will uh, import all the triples and exactly the same the same code that we had before. Um, if I rerun it, because I still have it here, just to prove that it's exactly the same code. Now, well, not much changed. Um, because yeah, but that, I mean, what, what we need to do is uh, is go to the to the extended version that also includes the, um, the properties. And if I go to Cypher in this engine, all I need to do is copy this fragment, which takes all the information. It will complain because I need to pass it. Um, Sorry, but I have my network being a bit silly, but it's saying, okay, give me the node ID and the speech style. Because the way it's written, as you can see, is I've extracted out the, the node ID instead of hard coding it, I put it as a, as a parameter. And the same with the speech style. So instead of hard coding it, the short or the long or the default, I put it as a property. So what we do is set the parameters and rerun the query. So you have the logic there. Mm -hmm. So let's set the parameters uh, and remind me again, Tom Cruise was 26, 16? 16. 16, 16. Okay, so let's go with node 16 and maybe with the default. So if I set this um, parameter and I rerun my query, that should generate. Oh yeah, nice. That. Tom Cruise was yeah. born. Now the thing is, you know, this is completely generic which means that, uh, well, just like we did before, if instead of taking Tom Cruise, we go and take, what was it? Um, it's, um, 29. 29. Uh, anyway, whatever it is, it will work, hopefully. <laughs> we will find out what that is. So we set this new property 29, and if I run the same logic, this time it will pick up whatever 29 is, and yeah. it will stop gun. It's telling us it was released on that day. The tagline is that. Uh, and and it, it's authored by um, so yeah the author we have a much and, uh, more yeah because this, yeah. that here I've I've kind of I've probably removed the the aggregation but anyway the the idea is 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 yeah. clear right so we have um yeah I'll I'll bring that fragment of code there so that we only have one line per per predicate so we don't need to, uh, yeah for the for the vectors yeah but um. But yeah, that, that's that's the so now if you think of it, we have a, a completely generic query. So this query has no reference at all to our um, movie database whatsoever. So let's yeah. uh, um, let's show that we've generated something something completely generic, and 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 to prove it, we can go and replicate exactly the same on another data set. So we have uh, because uh, those of you who are into football might, must be aware of it. I mean, there's been the uh, Euro uh, here, uh, the, the women's Euro just finished, which uh, England England actually won. It's a bit old, old, old data. We probably can update that, but let's create a, a a data set out of that. So that's the women's World Cup. So we have players, we have teams, we have squads, we have uh, all sorts of things. And I'm going to just show that we can replicate exactly the same logic this time without going step by step. Uh, all I will need to do uh, is um, go to our browser any questions so far alex does that um no no questions from chat but this is a, another uh, invitation of uh, uh of uh out to you uh, if you're watching this live type your question in chat i mean there's one we can we can uh, we can talk about this now or later babu writes uh, a link can we see an example where we use link prediction based on ontologies? If not in this session, maybe in another session. So maybe uh, I'm sure not not in this session, but um, 
link, yeah. link prediction based on ontologies could be could be something we can uh, we could look at. Okay. In, uh, That's interesting. It would be great if you could elaborate a little bit on that because there's we have some link prediction algorithms in GDS, which is normally mostly uh, uh, data driven, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. I don't know how, what that would look like based on the ontology because we, I mean, how can you maybe Babu can can send a note on 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 what would that look like? Let me yep. get the connection details. Uh, I don't know whether to pick it up. Uh, Neil J and connect and log into our database. Yeah, that's probably my my network being a bit funny because normally this uh, there you go connects directly. Well, like I said before, we have here um, we can call BB schema okay, it's not giving me the autocomplete because it's taking there you go it's uh... being a bit slow on my schema visualization there you go so this is a bit a bit richer model so we have persons that are players that are coach that play for squads they also play games or matches matches in tournaments and and they represent countries because that was a world cup so yeah. um you know if we quickly do the the step-by-step -step thing let's try if this works here so it was rdf uh the database is neo 4 j and we can do onto you know for this one it works so it's probably something with um with um movie database for some reason Okay, Maybe. let's yeah. break that. <clears throat> Same uh, process as we did before. We create a new empty file. We save it. Let's call it this time um, again in um, going meta session seven ontologies in the same way we called it uh, movies. Let's call it football test TTL. Now we can come and tell protege okay open this new file yes i want it in the same window we find it here all great we have our entities uh relationships and so on and so forth so something uh that we can do uh very uh, quickly let me just see that just one second that's not the one that i was looking for out of here but let's yeah let's take for example something uh like um like we did before person uh let's give it a name very quickly um We can use the uh, namespace that we used before, so it can say it will be name, and the person's uh, name. We can get an example here. Will be unsurprisingly name. So just like before, let's get name. What else? Uh, now we're going to do the same. For example, for a squad. Right. So we can play say that a person plays for a squad and the squad the property is um uh id okay so let's call the name is the id and quickly then maybe we can do the same for the team the team um name is also called name and let's take, for example, one of the one of the properties, right? So, for example, if we go to mm -hmm. sorry, the relationships, if we say that a person is in a squad, we can um, create the annotation. We call it direct. And uh, oh, I created a, a sub property which is not what I wanted to do. Let's delete it. Okay. I hope I have not broken things. <laughs> direct okay so if i take direct and and i say for example how would you say uh when someone is in a squad well someone played for a team right for example 
Yeah. Wait for a team. And we can use these as the default. I'm not going to create all of them. Let's use just the default. Uh, what else? We can do it for uh, represents. Represents is the relationship that connects the, a player to the country that they play for. So I can say the direct is, um, for example, uh, has represented national uh, the national team of, right? Uh, yeah, if it's like uh, England or something, then it's... Uh... Exactly. So the player has represented the national team of, of England, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. and, and let's do it also, um, I don't know, we have, a, like I said, we don't have the, 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 proper, the data type properties, but we can create them. We can say um, there's one called uh, date of birth, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So we have yeah, DOB. Oh. So if we have the date of birth, uh, except that in this case, we're not going to use, we use the active ontology namespace, not that it makes a massive difference, but anyway, we now have the property. The property uh, applies to uh, to person. Sorry, I'm doing it a bit quick, but uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm extending the ontology to create the property and I'm going to now annotate it. I'm going to, uh, maybe we can give it a, a, a label as usual because this has to be the OB. But uh, now we want to give it the uh, direct, which will be something like what was born on a particular date and we give it the default. Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to stop here, but I could keep annotating uh, uh, elements, right? So what I'm yeah, going yeah, to yeah. do is I'm going to save this. That should hopefully, um, where is my, uh, oh, I've taken it here, my other screen. So as before, this has introduced a number of annotations. Uh, has it? I don't see that yes. here. Played four. Oh, played four. Yeah, good. Yeah. So. I am going to use, because this is not online, the copy paste. So, um, oh, I have to do the, the init of the, because it's the first time I'm going to import RDF. So let me very quickly copy paste the, the setting. So create the um, constraint, set the, the graph config, and now copy this again and do the usual call NTNS import uh, this time inline. And again, it's turtle. I paste my uh, ontology, imported 59 triples, all nice. And now let's go to our magic um, uh, natural language generator. So if I do <laughs> this, just to prove that it's exactly the the um, the same exactly the same code. So if I run that, it will of course complain because it will tell me that give me first the ID. Yep. And the first so time. say you need the ID first. Yep. So let's get it from here. And let's go with the style. Which one? Let's take one of the players that we had here. Let's go with this uh, person, Andrea, with ID um, 45, right? That's the new 4 j ID. Mm -hmm. So 45, that sounds probably Portuguese. Find out. So once we've set that, if I rerun the query, there you go. So she was born on that date. So, and she played for Brazil in a number of years. And uh, she has represented the national team of Brazil. There you go. So we yeah. can end course, we can concatenate those. And but you know the idea is that again, just yeah. with some uh, some manual annotation uh, on the on the ontology, and just uh, define once. Now our general purpose uh, engine uh, is capable of uh, of producing this um, this natural language. So yeah, let's take a pause here. And I don't know if I have any questions or if uh, this has been to to meta even for our for our <laughs> <laughs> i don't know no if you have question type it in but but what we basically created now is uh, is a chatbot 
In my exactly. Mind. Well, that, that's well. <laughs> this you're totally right, and and that's that's totally where where I'm going, and and that's actually my plan for the next session. What's missing here is we. Uh, I mean, we can answer the question: What do you know about X? Right. So now Neo can yep. generate a natural language with just the definition of this annotation, and he can tell me something. What's missing here is the kind of the stories, the intents. I mean, the the natural language understanding. I, mean, I can I can mm. give an ID. And, and Neo tells me all, all, all it knows about something. But what we're missing here is how does this framework or this engine understand natural language? I mean, the, the incoming natural language. When I ask, hey, how are you? Tell me everything instead of, of giving an ID. Tell me what you, everything you know about Tom Cruise. So something that parses that and that interprets what's my intent and then translate that into into some action which will be querying neo 4 j is exactly the 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 part that we're going to cover in the next one i don't know the next one or the one after because yep. you know it, it will depend but but totally that that's uh mm -hmm. and i've been playing with a couple of um of uh um conversational frameworks as they call them where you yep. define this kind of intents and it's you know and you can follow uh step-by-step -step conversations and uh, yeah, well, let's not anticipate that, but that's exactly exactly no. the idea. <laughs> I wanted to kind of touch on, on this kind of more manual configuration through the ontology, but uh, but that's that's another very very interesting topic that we should be covering soon. No, it's very interesting. I think it's uh, it was it was uh, pretty cool. Um, so you 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 combine uh, these two systems basically together or, or link them up, and then by 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 adding that that additional uh, information, you get um, you get to uh, uh, to use it in a different a different way in, in, in a more uh, uh, yeah natural language in a more understandable way probably I guess for for uh, for somebody. So I could I could imagine this is an interesting uh, if if it if not for a, for a chatbot, it, it it could also be interesting if you if you have some kind of query box let's imagine where it's where the data is a little bit complicated and you ask some kind of question you 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 find maybe a, a certain node or a certain a certain data point let's say and you you'd want to know about more about this then you you basically get a instead of just just visualizing yeah. the code or saying this exactly. you, you get a bit I mean, more text and then yeah yeah i mean that that could that could be one way but think of a Imagine you're interacting with, I mean, you're getting the answer, uh, you know, through audio instead of, of a screen. Yes. Right? So yeah. that's, <laughs> that's true. Yes. I mean, once you have text, I mean, speech generators is pretty straightforward. You can put that in into Google, you know, read whatever. And, mm. um, but yeah, exactly. The, the, the idea is, you know, any query you write in, in, in Cypher, you can, instead of producing a record as output, you could generate some uh, natural language like we've done here. So, yep. Totally, and 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 again, the, the 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 bit that I like to emphasize is, I I don't kind of hard code my logic into my queries or in my client code. I mean, I could write a cipher query that returns everything about uh, Tom Cruise and then translate that. I mean, iterate over the results and translate that into. I don't want to do that. I want to define it once declaratively in my ontology, and then I want some general purpose code that will mm -hmm. take whatever I've defined in a general fashion. And apply it to my data. And like we saw, I mean, I created it for the movies database, but we did it in a general way that could be applied to the uh, to the football data set. We could apply it to the Panama Papers. I mean, whatever your your data set uh, is, you create the ontology, annotate it, and that will pick it up. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think that's a great uh, a, a great general best practice tip to to do it like this instead of uh, instead of making it uh, making it hard uh, hard coded into your into your um, into your queries because if you not only if you change data set I mean it, you probably work with a specific data set you so, so you won't switch from a movies data set to a football data set but you will add more data to your data set and once you do you you lose out because th this data is not technically in in there and you have to go through all, all of your queries basically to to add it in and it's that's a little totally. bit of a nuisance and, and think of you know imagine i want to now with the with the little addition i could just add a, a spanish version of this right a exactly yes yeah. so I, I could it would be the same logic except that instead of saying go with the default or go with the formal or with the long or with the short go with the german one or the yeah. german long or the spanish casual oh i mean you could really create as many annotations as you have and the same data in your in your knowledge graph would be generating natural language in, in, in multiple languages. So it, it brings also the multilinguality element as well, which is pretty pretty interesting. And it's also the 
you know, when we do when we make this knowledge explicit, we're making our data smarter. That's the idea. We don't have in the, the, the intelligence is not on the client side. We're pushing it and making it explicit in our ontology and in our graph. That's that's what's what's powerful here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, I, I don't see I don't see uh, any question came in, come in. So um, and we we are basically at the at the end of of, of the, the time uh, and the the yeah, what we had planned for today. I think so. Um, so we yeah, can, um, yeah, we can go on our holiday, can't we? I mean, we've <laughs> just a little bit of a break. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a, exactly. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's cool. Uh, you know, like like we said, if you if you want to try it out, the the repository is updated, so you can you can give it a spin yourself, uh, and uh, and use it with your own data set or with with any of the, um, the sandbox data sets. Um, a quick question on Aura: uh, Would this be possible in Aura with? Uh, we there's one one bit that would not work at the moment, which is the input of the RDF, and but we're working on that because the problem is RDF currently is implemented as an extension, so you have to yeah. deploy it. Uh, we, we do that in Sandbox, so every time there's a new release, it comes with APOC, with you know with uh, GDS, and, and with uh, new semantics, but you cannot deploy extensions in, 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 in Aura. So what we're working on is kind of a, a, an, an external uh, RDF importer that would basically uh, do the same thing, but without having to deploy it directly as, a, as an extension. So it will just parse the ontology that we've annotated and push it to your Aura instance. So I would say, what's that space? I mean, that's uh, we have a prototype that's working already. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm figuring out if that will be part of the new semantics project or would be a separate one, because you know it's. Um, but yeah, that the, the that's the only the only bit that that's. Yeah. Uh, of course, anyone can be free to 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 write their own. Uh, RDF parser and writer, but probably that that would be yeah. that would be easier to um, you know to do to wait for that to be available and then and then use it that way. Yeah, Absolutely. but the rest is is plain plain cipher. We have not done anything anything beyond that. So yeah, maybe that's another idea. Maybe for one of the next episodes, if 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 there's a prototype already, if if the prototype is more advanced yeah. uh, in 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 stage, we could. Uh, we could take that and uh, and showcase yeah. what it can do and what uh, sure. uh, well, if people want to try because I guess this is the, the the perfect audience for 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 it to try if yeah. we are ready to give it a tr give it a, a, a try then um, that's we a can, good idea we can yeah. invite yeah, yeah. Uh, the audience to to try it out themselves and but give some that feedback. Might be, that might be the one in September, so that's uh... yeah yeah not totally or, or or whenever yeah okay well. Uh, that's uh, that's it for today then i guess uh, thank you very much jesus uh, links will be in the description so all, all we talked about uh, I'll, I'll add to the video description you can obviously watch previous episodes if you missed any on on the playlist um if you uh have not subscribed to neo4j channel to get notified about future episodes obviously please hit that button uh to subscribe um and uh yeah i uh, wish you a great august wish you a great great summer uh, if you are in the northern hemisphere, great winter. If you are uh, down uh, down south, and um, yeah, talk to you soon, uh, and uh, have a good rest of your week, everybody. Bye, Take everyone. Care. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thanks.